TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel and Kosovo have formally established diplomatic relations with Pristina requesting to establish its embassy in Jerusalem. Western officials reveal that an Iranian attempt to target Israeli, U.S. and Emirati embassies in East Africa were successfully thwarted. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is warning that the Islamic Republic of Iran could be very close to having produced the fissile material needed for a nuclear weapon. Israel and Kosovo have formally established diplomatic relations. At an online ceremony that was held in their respective foreign ministries in both Jerusalem and Pristina, Israel's top diplomat Gabi Ashkenazi and Kosovan counterpart Meliza Haradinai Estubla represented their countries in the telecasted event, which was also attended by the American envoy to the Balkan states and the charge d'affaires of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. In joint remarks, Minister Ashkenazi revealed that he had received an official request from his Kosovan counterpart to establish Pristina's embassy in Jerusalem, which Israeli sources confirmed to TV7. The diplomatic mission is expected to be inaugurated by the end of March. The establishment of a relationship between Kosovo and Israel is yet another important, exciting, and historic step. This morning I received your formal request, Madam Minister, to open your embassy in Jerusalem, which of course I approve, and I look forward to seeing it open very soon, hopefully with you. It is worth mentioning that Kosovo will be the first Muslim-majority country to open an embassy in Israel's capital, Jerusalem, as part of a pledge to do so under a deal that was brokered by former U.S. President Donald Trump. Kosovo has waited for a very long time to establish diplomatic relations with Israel. On this important day, we mark a new chapter in the historical bond between our countries who have witnessed a long and challenging path to existing as a people and to becoming states. The decision by Kosovo to open its embassy to Israel in Jerusalem naturally drew condemnations from the Palestinian leadership in Ramallah, as well as from a number of countries around the world. Among others, the Turkish Foreign Ministry released a statement in which it maintained that the commitment of Kosovo goes against international law, including the United Nations resolutions adopted on this issue, while further stressing that it is clear that any step towards this decision will not serve the Palestinian cause and undermines the vision of a two-state solution. In other news, the Gulf Arab state of Qatar announced that it would deliver to the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip 360 million U.S. dollars over the course of 2021. In a move coordinated with Israeli authorities, which aimed to alleviate the humanitarian distress of the residents of the Palestinian enclave, a first transfer of the Qatari funds will be distributed later this week on Thursday. Qatari envoy to Gaza, Mohammed El Emadi, confirmed last night that the first installment will include 10 million US dollars, earmarked for 100,000 Palestinian families, each of them due to receive a total of $100. Turning back to Jerusalem, where the Israeli security cabinet is scheduled to hold a meeting tomorrow against the backdrop of rising tensions with the Islamic Republic of Iran. This will be the first official such meeting of Jerusalem's security cabinet since the Biden administration took office. In related news, an Iranian attempt to exact revenge for the assassination of RGC Quds Force Commander Qasem Soleimani and top nuclear scientist Mohsen Fakhrizadeh by committing an act of terror on foreign diplomatic missions of Israel, the United States and the United Arab Emirates in an undisclosed East African country was reportedly thwarted last month. According to Western security officials who spoke on condition of anonymity, 
Iranian agents, including dual European Iranian citizens, arrived in the undisclosed African nation to gather intelligence about their potential targets. Subsequently, some of the Iranian agents were identified and arrested. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is warning that the Islamic Republic of Iran could be very close to having produced the fissile material needed for a nuclear weapon. In an exclusive interview with the American NBC News television network, the top U.S. diplomat further warned, quote, It is a problem that could get more acute because if Iran continues to lift some of these restraints imposed by the agreement, in reference, of course, to the 2015 nuclear deal, achieving nuclear weapon capabilities could get down to a matter of weeks. Secretary Blinken went on to stress that the bottom line is they're getting closer to the point where they would be either a threshold nuclear power or actually a nuclear power. The alarming rate at which the Islamic Republic is rushing toward a nuclear weapon has consequently led to increased efforts by the European Union to try and find ways for the U.S. to rejoin the 2015 nuclear deal, which Brussels is convinced would incentivize Iran to return into full compliance. High Representative Borrell spoke to Antony Blinken, and one of the issues was, of course, uh, Iran and the nuclear deal. The EU is committed and is trying to find ways for the U.S. to rejoin the nuclear deal and for Iran to return to the full compliance. And of course, we are uh, working on it. I mean, there is uh, full support from the EU, which, uh, if you re recall the statement from uh, 11th of um, January of the EU on this issue, that uh, the EU is supporting all the efforts, all the diplomatic efforts to find a way for the US to rejoin. The ministers uh, of the JCPOA during their high level meeting on 21st of December also underlined the need to find a way in a joint efforts. So the efforts are ongoing, and the phone call between the high representative, high representative Representative Borrell and uh, Secretary of State Blinken were first practical step in establishing contact, raising the issue, and now the issue will be dealt with uh, at appropriate levels. Despite EU efforts to convince the United States to return into the 2015 nuclear deal, Secretary Blinken has earlier emphasized that lifting Washington sanctions on Tehran would only take place after it verifies that the Islamic Republic has in fact resumed full compliance to the deal. Furthermore, the Biden administration has repeatedly stressed its intention to negotiate with the Ayatollah regime a longer and stronger agreement to deal with the wide scope of Tehran's malign behavior. Naturally, the Islamic Republic does not intend to renegotiate with the United States any deal making this assertion clear on numerous occasions. It is interesting to note that the Islamic Republic has continued to employ creative methods to circumvent U.S. sanctions over the years on its various industries. And while it presumably succeeded to keep its oil exports afloat, time and again it is faced with international scrutiny. One such incident occurred about a week ago when Indonesian authorities seized Iranian and Panamian flagged oil tankers for suspected illegal oil transfers in Indonesian waters near Kalimantan Island. According to Indonesian authorities, the vessels were caught red-handed, transferring oil from the Iranian-flagged empty horse to the Panamian-flagged empty Freya, while adding that there was an oil spill around the receiving tanker. Iranian authorities responded by insisting that its oil tanker was seized over merely a technical issue and demanded of Indonesian authorities to explain the seizure of its vessel. Thank you for watching us. For more of TV7's productions and reports, including a variety of programs and editorials, I encourage you to visit our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. 
As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join the team here in Jerusalem and myself to lift up Indonesia in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion and its numerous ramifications worldwide. Separately, I would like to also thank all of you who partner with TV7 Israel. Your dedicated monthly support, both by means of prayer and finance, is vital for our ongoing operations. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.